language arts. We're talking about our sentence. Right now we're talking more specifically what was happening in the story when this sentence occurred. So yes, she, they said that men had superior rights and privileges because they were smarter. Um, because um, Eve ate the apple, she was weak. She was weak spiritually, but it doesn't mean she was always weak spiritually. But she had a, a time, she was, she was being deceived. We talked about that earlier today, right? So Sojourner did not appreciate this conversation at all. What did she do? This kind of sentence kind of told us, tells us what she did. James. Yeah, she, she walked right up there and she banged her hand on the podium and she was very, very adamant. And she told them that that was all rubbish, basically, that women are not weak. She's certainly not weak. She was a slave. So she, I'm trying to find this part where she said, if the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, then women ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. I love that. Yes, Wen Shin. Oh, now who are you doing again? Oh, very much so. Very strong. Yes. So she got very upset. So this sojourner put one big black beautiful foot in front of the other and she stomped. What is this an example of? Stomped on the floorboards of ignorance that were underneath. What is this? An example of Olivia. Such a fun word to say. You got it. Onomatopoeia. All right. Let's start breaking it down. I'm going to use another marker because this marker, my black one, is not up to par. All right, let's start off by doing the nouns. We have four nouns. Who can name one? M. Owen. Floorboards. Floorboards. It's another one. Ella. Well, it is a noun, but what kind of noun is it? Yes. Um, another noun. Do we have one, two, we have two, so we have two more. 
Helen. Jeremiah. That's a descriptive. What is it describing, though? We already got that. It's describing noun. I mean, it's describing foot. Big, black, beautiful. What is a noun? This is another Tessa. Ignorance. Very good. We have one more. Sojourner put one big black beautiful foot in front of the other and she stomped on the floorboards of ignorance that were underneath. Oh. Oh. Well, this one is kind of deceiving. I wouldn't call it a noun, but this thing is a noun. How would you say that? It's just, I, yeah, well, it is, but it's, it's really. I would have never thought of that. No. In front of the other, the big, beautiful, big, black, beautiful foot noun in front of the other. All right, what about, since we are doing nouns, let's do descriptives of nouns, which are what? What are descriptives of nouns called? Grayson. Yes, can you name an adjective? Um, big, black, beautiful. Very good, that all is Because it's describing what? Yep. There is one more. Look at the nouns. It's actually in that section. Boy. I don't really know, but can I guess? Yes. Nope, but that's a good guess. Part of what we just did, kind of all in one big line. Jonathan. Yeah. yeah. All the adjectives, what was that? All the adjectives, ew. Ew. Oh, are describing yeah. one noun. Yeah, that's gross. It's very, um. It's gross, but I like the color. I do too. My favorite color, one of my favorite colors. I didn't write, okay. So we got adjectives and nouns. Let's do verbs. What, we have two verbs. What is one, James? Uh -huh. Yes. It's also onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. All right, so Sojourner put one big black Beautiful foot in front of the other. Emmy. Really? Yeah. Very good. We got the proper noun. What about propos uh, proposition? Proposition. Preposition. Remember, a preposition is describing. Where? Jonathan. No. That underneath is something else. Very, well, we'll talk about it in a bit. So it's a little more uh, difficult to figure out. So preposition, what would be one, Tessa? In front, yes. I'm just gonna write prep. So that goes to that. All right. And then 
then we have two more. Christian. Um, yes. One more. Owen. Out. Yes. find the words. Yeah. All right, so we got the prepositions. What about conjunction? Sojourner put one big black beautiful foot in front of the other. She stomped on the floorboard with ignorance that were underneath. So we have two complete clauses within this sentence. We do. So it's a complete Kind of sentence are we talking about first of all machine Compound. yes and remember a conjunction combines the two clauses of a compound sentence so what is the conjunction jeremiah and. yes very good i'm just going to put conjunction <laughs> All right, let's see, what do we have left? Okay. What about an article? Remember an article is before a noun and it's usually a particular word or words. Toby. No. I'm sorry, what? No. The, very good. Yes, I'm trying to. I'm trying to make sure. Yeah. Yep, so this one is in front of floorboards, which is a noun, so that would make it an article. This one is in front of the noun, so yes. Oh, art. 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 All right, we got articles. Just want to make sure. Oh, do we have a pronoun? What is a pronoun again? Who can tell me what a pronoun is? When she? Uh, a word that takes the place of. Yes, it takes the place of. So what would the pronoun be in the sentence? Sojourner put one big black beautiful foot in front of the other and she stomped on the floorboards of ignorance that were underneath. Yes, when she? she? Yes. Let's talk about so that and were that is something called a relative pronoun. We're not going to worry about that. That'll be something you'll be covered next year. And linking verb is were. So if this is a verb of sorts, it's called a linking verb. What do you think underneath is? It's kind of tricky. What is it? What describes a verb? So let's just read the second clause. She stomped on the floorboards of ignorance that were underneath. Olivia. Um, a well, an adjective describes a noun. 
So if this were a verb, ignorance that were underneath. James. Magic. Yes. Very good. That's a tricky one. All right, we got it. That's a long sentence. But it's a, I like the sentence. The sentence is really a fun, especially once we, when you learned about, the, when you read the story, it's just a great description of her, of Sojourner. Remember, it was a true story too. But it's a great descriptive sentence. Yeah. Great descriptive sentence. That'll be a fun one to rewrite too. All right. I wanted to make sure that wasn't important. I'm going to get out our book. We're just getting to a fun part. What happened? What, what surprisingly happened? I was shocked. But I, I mean, I figured it was going to happen because there wouldn't be a story. But I don't understand why it happened. Grayson. Yeah, it was a spectacular essay. Not. <laughs> what did his essay include or involve? Was it what? It was just a one sentence line saying what when she? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wow, that's a winning essay. What's that? No, we're we're gonna find out. I think it's there's there's something more to it. I think Mr. Lemoncello is an interesting guy. Yeah. So he probably had a very interesting reason why he allowed that essay to be a winning essay. Luke. Can we go back to the paper? Yes, if you promise to pay attention and actually listen. But yes, I have no problem with that. I'm gonna start yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna start reading, so I need you to be quiet. We are in chapter nine. He just got called up to the stage. Kyle couldn't wait to tell his family the good news. I won the essay contest. He showed him a shiny new library card. Congratulations, said his mom. Way to go, said his dad. His brothers, Curtis and Mike, were more interested in Kyle's other card. His $500 Lemoncello gift card. It's good for 12 months, said Kyle. But you need to use it now, said Mike. We need to go to the store tonight so you can buy me Mr. Lemoncello's Kooky Wacky Hockey. I can't. Why not? I have to show my library card at the store to cash it in. And um, I'm grounded, remember? You know, Kyle, said his dad, looking at his mother. He nodded. Since you worked extra hard and did such a bang-up job on your essay, but did he really? <laughs> <laughs> did he really do a bang-up job on his essay? No, no he did not. So he's, I think we might consider suspending your punishment. Really? Really. Kyle's mom and dad smiled at him. The way they smiled whenever Mike won a football game or Curtis won the science fair. After supper, all five Keeleys piled into the family van and headed off to the local toy store. Lemoncello's hockey game is awesome, said Mike as they drove to the store, especially when the penguins play the polar bears. I'm hoping to find a classic board game, mused Curtis. Mr. Lemoncello's bewilderingly baffling bibliomania. Is that about the Bible? asked his dad from behind the wheel. Not exactly, said Curtis, although the Bible, especially a rare Gutenberg edition, may be one of the treasures you might find in collect because the object of the game is to collect rare and valuable books by the Penguins and the Kooky Wacky Hockey aren't from Pittsburgh like the NHL, said Mike, cutting off Curtis. They're from Ant Antarctica and the Polar Bears, they're from Alaska. Kyle had decided to divvy up his gift cards five ways, well that was nice of him, to give everybody, including his mom and dad, $100 to play with. As soon as they entered the toy store, the family split up, cruising the aisles with their own sharp shopping carts. His mom was going to upgrade Mr. Lemoncello's restaurant rush. His dad was looking at one of Mr. Lemoncello's complicated what-if historical games. 
What if the Romans had won the American Civil War? Huh? What? Uh, what? I don't think so. That is not historically accurate. Exactly. <laughs> Kyle hung with Curtis and Mike for a while. Being the one with the gift card made him feel like he was suddenly their big brother. Mike quickly found his PlayStation hockey game, and Curtis was in geek heaven when he finally found Bibliomania. They only have one left, he gushed, tearing off the cellophane shrimp rack, wrap and prying open the lid. He sat down right in the middle of the store and unfolded the game on his lap. You see, you start under the rotunda in the circular reading room, then you go upstairs and enter each of these 10 chambers where you have to answer a question about a book. Um, I think I hear mom calling me, said Kyle. She must need the gift card. Enjoy. And Kyle took off. Number, or chapter 10. I don't know if we're gonna get this done, friends. Now this is what I call a party, said Kyle's mother as she helped herself to a bacon-wrapped shrimp from a tray being carried by a waiter in a tuxedo. Kyle and his parents were in the crowded ballroom of the Parker House Hotel for the Lemoncello Library's Gala, grand opening reception. The Parker House was located right across the street from the old Gold Leaf Bank, building in the cluster of office build building, craft shops, clothing stores, and restaurants called Old Town. I'm going to see if I can find a Kimmy, Kyle said to his mom and dad. Give her our congratulations, said his mom. We're proud of her too, added his dad. Kyle made his way through the glittering sea of dressed up adults. Even though his parents had put on fancy clothes for the reception, Kyle was wearing something comfortable to go exploring in. As instructed by the lock-in guide he'd received on Wednesday. He packed a sleeping bag and a small suitcase with a change of clothes, toiletries, and yes, as requested, an extra pair of underwear. Kyle saw Sierra wrestle all alone in the corner near a clump of curtains. It did look like her mother had come to the party with her. Sierra, of course, had her nose buried in a book. Kyle shook his head. This girl was about to spend the night in a building filled with books, and she was skipping all the free food and pop so she could read? That was just nutty. Haley Daly, wearing a sparkling blouse, was posing for a wall of photographers who wanted to snap her picture. Her mother was at the party too. While the cameras were focused on Haley's smile, Mrs. Daly wrapped up a couple of chicken kebabs in a napkin and slipped them inside her purse. Ew. Now Kyle saw Charles Chittington. Poor guy must not have read the memo about comfortable clothes. He was still wearing his khakis and blazer, just like his dad. Kyle figured the Chittingham family Chittington family must own like 300 pairs of pleated tan pants. Hey Kyle, Kimmy waved at him from the near fake shrub curled up like a silly straw. Hey, said Kyle, did you remember to bring your library card? Yep. Huh, I got different books on the back of mine. One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, ooh, by Dr. Seuss, and Nine Stories by J.D. Salinger. Guess they're like baseball cards. They're all different. Hey, you guys, Miguel Ferdinand, Ferdinand, Fernandez, more excited than usual, which was saying something, pushed through the mob to join them. Did you try these puppy cheese things? Nah, I'm sticking to food I recognize. The puppy cheese things are called fromage tartlets, said Andrew Peckelman, coming over to join the group. Huh? Ah, good to know. A waiter passed by with a tray of tray loaded down with small boxes of Lemoncello's Anagram Cook Cracker Cookies. What time is it? Oh gosh, we need to keep going. All right, let's hold on. All right. I just kind of want to see if I can kind of jump ahead. All right, so they're at the party, and now suddenly all the adults in the ballroom started clapping. Mr. Lemoncello, looking, looking like a beanpole, wearing a, tall, a tailcoat and a tiny birthday party fireman's hat, strode into the room through a side door. Thank you, thank you, he said, stretching the elastic band to raise the kid-sized hat. 
and tipping it toward the crowd. You are too kind. When he let the hat go, it snapped back with a sharp twang. As Dr. Zinchenko informed you, I'd like to say a few brief words. Here they are. Short, memorandum, and underpants. And let us pause to remember the immortal words of Dr. Seuss. The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you go. Children, Mr. Limoncello flourished his arm toward the ballroom doors. It's time to go across the street. Your amazingly spectacular new public library awaits. Ooh. Now they get to go into the library. So, trying to decide. We are not, this test is probably not going to take you long. All right, so we will not have a social studies upload because we are taking a test.